Hi, my name is Nikki Perry, and with my husband John Perry, we're owners of Catering by a Small Affair. For today's culinary club, I am preparing a wild mushroom strudel with a white truffle glaze, and a spinach feta purse with a pine nut oregano dip, and a mini Greek chicken pot pie with a sun-dried tomato tzatziki sauce. Hi everyone, thank you for being here. It's my pleasure to be here also. Phyllo means leaf in Greek because of its texture and the fineness. Now, I really didn't know much about phyllo, you, you know, many years ago until I went to Greece. The only experience I had with phyllo was going to a cocktail party and getting that little golden triangle filled with spinach and oozy cheese, or going to a bakery and getting baklava. But about 20 years ago, John and I went to Greece and we went to an island called Skathos, which is about 300 miles off of the coast of Athens on the east side. And it's a beautiful old world village. And we're walking around and we're in the town and I'm passing the store and this incredible aromas were coming out. And I looked in the window and there was all this golden pastry. And I went in and there was this 80 year old woman there. Her name was Vula and it was her pastry shop. And everything that was in the pastry shop was made out of phyllo. It was different sizes, different shapes, and different fillings. And she explained to me that phyllo is very popular in Greek food. Besides their beautiful beaches and architecture, phyllo is right up there. And she said to me that the Greeks love to have phyllo at practically every meal. For breakfast, they'll have a little cheese pie made with phyllo. For their lunch, they'll have maybe the spinach and cheese. And for dessert, they do something called galaka burika, which is a phyllo encrusted custard. And she also said that the Greeks eat three times a day. And um, they also divide their meal into mezetes, where they have their little bites, their appetizers. Mm -hmm. And the Greeks like to drink, but they don't drink without eating. And this is where your mezetes come into play. They'll serve maybe pickled vegetables, some olives, some cheese, and they'll do the little phyllo pies. And then for their main course, whatever is not eaten, they serve that with the additional small plates, with maybe a, a chicken and potato pie encrusted in phyllo. And then for dessert, they'll also do sweets and the phyllo desserts. Um, today I decided to um, do phyllo. Uh, I'm going to use the commercial phyllo, but when I was in Skiathos, Vula showed me how to make the traditional phyllo. Unfortunately, because of time, I couldn't do it, but I will explain a little about how she did it. She told me to come back at four in the morning, and I did, <laughs> after a couple shots of the Greek coffee. And ba basically, phyllo is your basic dough. She mixed some flour with some salt, she made a well, poured some warm water, and then kneaded it for 10 minutes. Then she put it in an oil bowl, covered it, and let it rest for two hours. Then she took it out, she divided it into four balls, and she took a dowel. Now it's, it's a little similar to this, it's not tapered and it's much longer, as opposed to your French rolling pin. And she rolled it out, rolled it out, rolled it out, and then she let it rest for another 30 minutes. And then she took it and she rolled it again. And she just kept rolling and rolling and pulling, and it was very elastic and very thin and very fragile. I practiced with her, but unfortunately, I didn't have the, the technique that Vula had. So I find that the commercial uh, phyllo that you get works just as well. Now, I decided to do a mushroom strudel for you today because um, I find that mushrooms are very distinctive with its subtle flavor and its texture. And as uh, Ethan had said, that my husband and I have a catering company, and primarily we do weddings. And at weddings, you know, we do a lot of appetizers, hors d'oeuvres, and we find that this happens to be a very uh, uh, friendly hors d'oeuvre, and it goes well with white and red wines, which we're also serving today. And uh, the Greeks really love mushrooms. They call it their mountain or forest food. And they really enjoy cooking with it. And also, they've uh, gotten into the French realm with it because of mushrooms a la grec, which is uh, mushrooms which are sauteed with olive oil, lemon, garlic, fennel, thyme, and it could be served either hot or cold. Now, we're going to start off with the mushroom strudel. Now, mushroom, uh, the strudel is very, the, uh, excuse me, the phyllo is very fragile, and you have to keep it covered. 
Once you open it up from the package, because it'll dry out very quickly, once you open it up, you cover it with saran wrap, plastic wrap, and then you cover that with the, uh, a towel that's damp. Now I suggest having melted butter ready to go. Now you take one sheet, oops, and don't worry if it tears because it's very forgiving. And make sure you brush the edges. Okay, get another sheet. And then one more. And then cover that back up. Okay, now for our filling, you follow your recipe. We have a half a cup of unsalted butter. Break that up. When that melts, you add a half a cup of finely chopped shallots. And you cook that about 10 minutes till they get soft and sweet. And in the essence of time, we'll move along. Uh, the mushrooms I use today, I used four types of mushrooms for the strudel because I like to give it some variety. I used your traditional white mushroom. I used a cremini, which is a little darker and a little more fuller in flavor. And it's also called an immature portobello. And here's your portobello that I've used. It's very steak-like, very meaty in the texture and flavor. And I used a shiitake, which kind of looks like an umbrella. And it's also very smoky flavored. And I do trim off the edges of the shiitake, but the other mushrooms, I use the whole uh, mushroom. OK, so we add our mushrooms. It's amazing. All these mushrooms are going to cook down to just a little bit. OK, and next, I added, I'm adding duck cells. Now a duck cell is a mushroom which has been baked at a high temperature about 425 for 12 minutes and then lowered to 375 for about 20 minutes. And what that does is it takes out the moisture, about two thirds of the moisture of the mushroom. So it intensifies the flavor of the mushroom, but it also gives it um, uh, a, a, a intensified flavor, but it also retains a little bit of the, of the moisture. Now this is a mushroom that has been roasted. So you see it's got a little bit of the veins in it. Okay. So we add our duck cells. Okay. And then when you find that the mushrooms are brown, you add sherry, a half a cup, and then some heavy cream, a quarter of a cup. Salt and pepper, half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then once this is cooked down and it thickens up, I add some herbs. With the uh, strudels, I like to do sage and thyme. And I do that at the end. And then once this is all mixed, 
you transfer it to a plate and put it in the refrigerator to chill because all your fillings that you use when you work with phyllo has to be chilled. So I have a chilled filling right here. Okay. Now you take your filling and you probably leave like about an inch. You start at the uh, longer side, which is closest to you. Leave about an inch. And mound it in a nice line. And use your fingers and to make it even. Okay. Now you take your edge and you fold it over. And you do that on the other side. And like I said, don't worry, with phyllo, it doesn't have to be perfect because it all, when it bakes, it all comes together. Now you brush the butter on each side. And then you roll it tight like a jelly roll. Okay, and then I have my pre-buttered pan, and you place it on there. And what I like to do with the strudel, if you're serving this as an appetizer, I like to pre-score it because it helps in the uh, cutting later. I just cut a little bit of the edges like this because this is the dry part. And then I do it at an angle like this. And into the oven it goes. Now I'm also serving today a purse, a spinach purse. And I'll show you how to do those. Again, we take our sheet, butter it, and we're gonna do five of these for the spinach purses because they're not rolled. As you see how fine and delicate the uh, phyllo is. And try to spread out your butter evenly because if you don't, it may get greasy in spots. Okay, that was three. And you have to work quickly. And also make sure you do the edges because if the edges dry, you'll have a hard time when you're forming your purses. Four, one more to go. Okay. Okay. Now for the purses, I'm gonna make 16 squares. So I divide it in half, and then cut that in half, and then half on this side and then half horizontally, and again, and again. Now I have my filling already made. This is your traditional spanikopita mix. It's spinach, leeks, feta cheese, and dill. And you take, and one egg. And you take a little bit of the filling, put it in the middle, and then you gather the corners and just pinch the top and then brush it with butter. So nice and easy. Okay. Now the next item I'm serving today is a little mini Greek chicken pot pie. Now to do the pot pie, on the side. Again, you start with the sheet of phyllo.
butter it. And for this one, I'm using three, three sheets. Okay. Butter the top sheet. Then I'm using a three inch cookie cutter. Actually, it's use the larger one. Okay, and I have my mini muffin tin, which is already pre-buttered. You take your circle and insert it into the muffin tin. And the mixture that I'm using for my Greek chicken pot pie is chicken, tomato, leeks, and a little bit of uh, dill and mint. And you spoon that right in. And then you fold it over and then butter that. Okay. Next, I'm going to make the traditional triangle. So, what you do for that is you only need one sheet of phyllo. It's fun, but you have to have patience when you work with this. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'd say this is probably about three inches. And you cut a line, and you butter that. You place a little bit of your filling, kind of at a diagonal. And you take your corner and you fold it over. And you butter that. And then you continue to fold like a flag. And then when you get to the top, you fold the edges over. And you have your traditional triangle. OK, next I'm going to do a cigar. That's a very popular shape in Greece. Uh, this one should probably be about four inches. Now you butter that. Put your filling at the edge again. Do a little more. Probably using about a tablespoon. Now you fold it over. Again, your little edges. Butter that. And starting at the end, nearest you, you just roll up. Very tight again, jelly roll style. But this is a very popular shape in Greece called the little cigars. Okay, next you could also do half moons. I take my cookie cutter. Well, first, let me butter this. Cut it in half. Take the three inch cookie cutter. And you have your circle. Put your filling at the end closer to you, and you leave a little bit of edge. Fold over the top. Pinch the edges. And you have your half moon shape. Next, I'm going to do a spiral. And for the spiral, you need one whole sheet.
You butter that. And don't forget the edges. And you place your filling. All around, along the edge. Okay. Now you make this one very thin, smaller than you did the original strudel. You mound it in a straight line. And this one, you don't have to fold the edges over, but you start to roll again. Make it tight like a jelly roll. And continue rolling up. And then once you've reached the end, you take it and turn one corner in, one end in, and start to roll. And there you go. In Greece, they're called these little snails. Okay, so you see, Philo is very versatile in the shapes. We've done the purse, we've done the triangle, the cigar, the half moon, and the snails, and their traditional long strudel. And I think our strudel might be ready. Okay. Okay. This is a sample of the strudel that's cooked. We take it and we let it cool for about a minute. And then we transfer to a cutting board. And as you see, the scoring helps in the cutting. I need a serrated knife. Uh, thanks, Rachel. Serrated knife. No. That's okay. I'll use this one. It's all right. And you cut into it. That's all right. And uh, can I have a plate, please? Thanks. And we have our finished product, and I'm going to plate that in just a second. So does anyone have any questions about phyllo or Greeks? <laughs> yes? Yes. As a matter of fact, the scraps, uh, what I do is I use it when I make a pie, a large pie. You take the scraps and you line the bottom with it, put your filling in, and then save your good pieces to cover the top. And then also in Greece, what they do do, which is very hard with this, but they, they take the scraps and they shred it very thin. And it becomes something that they call kataif. And it's very fine. It's almost like a bird's nest. And we've done it in our catering. We've done scallops wrapped in kataif. And it's really, really wonderful. Thank you. OK. We find that a serrated knife works better in the cutting. So once you have your final piece, you take it. And we like to drizzle a little bit of truffle oil on it. Okay, and there you go. Yeah, thanks. Are, is the, are there samples ready to start serving? Okay. Samples are out. Oh, great. So, <laughs> oh, good. I didn't even, I'm nearsighted. I couldn't even see. Delicious, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, any other questions? Yes? Exactly. That, that's the. Right, exactly. That's the fun thing about phyllo. You could do practically anything with it, any shape. And that's kind of like the, uh, the, like you're talking about rolling it over like the traditional pot sticker? Yes, absolutely. And the other good thing is, like, as I said, the fillings. You could be, it could be sweet or savory. Yes? Uh, with the spinach purse, I served an oregano pine nut dip, and I find that it complements the spinach nicely. It's basically, um, I toasted the pine nuts for a little bit, and then added some feta and some milk and some fresh oregano and dried oregano and pureed it. And then with the midi pot pie, I did a traditional sundry, it's, I'm sure you're all familiar with tzatziki. Tzatziki is the traditional yogurt and cucumber with the dill and garlic. Well, I did it with sun-dried tomato because I found that it complemented the, um, 
the mini chicken pot pie. And also the Greeks do do different tzatzikis. It's just not your typical cucumber. They do radish, they do fennel, um, you know, besides that. Yes? It depends on the, um, say for example, the strudels, I use three layers because you're rolling, so you're getting a lot of layers as you roll. But for the, uh, the, um, the chicken pot pies, I only use three because then you find that it's too dense if you use too many layers. But you get, a, you get a hang for it, and also your filling. If your filling is very runny, like if you do a larger pie, your filling could be more creamier and a little, have a little more moisture in it because you've got the topping and it's larger and you're going to serve it as a pie, not as an hors d'oeuvre. If you're eating as an hors d'oeuvre, you want your filling to be not so moist because um, it, when they're eating it, it gets a little bit messy. But I find that I get the hang of using how many um, uh, leaves by, just by, by experimenting with it. Yes? Um, my mother is Greek, actually, so I've done this kind of stuff a lot. A lot. Uh, it's fun to work with. Um, the, when you, I've never made filo, though. When you made it, do you find, like, what, how did you have to, like, put it right in the fridge? Once it's, once yes, it's out yes, it has to be refrigerated, exactly, and it could be frozen. But once right. you defrost filo, you, could never, you can't uh, freeze it again because right. it loses a, a bit of the texture. Right, right. Yeah, and it has to... It has to be refrigerated, it has to be the right temperature because as you see, I opened this up before the class started and now it's getting soft and it's sticking to. So yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's really time sensitive in, yeah, yeah, in yeah. both the texture and, and, and working with it. Yeah, yeah. I used it in the final last semester. Yeah, you have to work with it now. Yes. Yeah. Um, you're very talented with the different shapes too. I remember you showed me the shape. Yeah. It's, and these are just, you know, a few different, you could be creative and, and come up with, uh, you know, you could also do the cigars longer, you could do it shorter, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, you could use different cookie cutters, but um, I find that um, it's just, it's just a really nice versatile hors d'oeuvre, and as I said before, you could do it savory with any kind of filling, and you could also do it as a sweet, and now I'm sure you see in the stores, they do the little mini um, cups oh, yeah. that you could fill for, you know, so yeah. it, it saves the time. You could also make it like that and use your... Uh, you know, use your mini muffin tin, and instead of filling it, just leave it, um, you know, open, and it'll right. Cr uh, right. crust up. Um, uh, when you make a, when you make the filo dough before it gets rolled out, what is, what is the consistency? Is it kind of like a white bread dough, or uh, the you mean the the homemade filo? Yeah, well, like yes, it's filo. it's actually like this, just very very thin. But they also she also does it. Um, it's called the country style filo where it's a little bit thicker. Right. And um, th that I find is, it's, it's got a little more flavor, but it's not as, it doesn't have that flakiness to it. You right. know, when you use, because this is so thin, you use so many layers, so you get more of that puffy flakiness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they're both, they're both very good. And she just, she just really had the knack. She just kept rolling and rolling. And I would do it, but I would get all the holes. And she said, don't worry, you just pat it with a little water and, you yeah, know, put yeah. it together. But she was just, hers was just so streamlined. Yeah, yeah. But it was really quite an experience. And here's this 80-year-old woman, you know, I know right? every... What, what island were you on? Skiathos. Skiathos. Yes, it's about 300 miles uh, off the coast of Athens. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yes? No, you have to do it with the... And as a matter of fact, as I said, this isn't the... Uh, I, I couldn't get a dowel, and uh, this is the, the French rolling pin. But actually, the dowel, is, it's not tapered. It's just, all the, it's just straight. And it's about, the one she had was about four feet long. <laughs> and it was, she was going at it. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. <laughs> yes. What brand do you use? I use Athens, yeah. Yeah, the Athenos brand. I've never seen anything else. Uh, cream, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I find that this one, the Krinos, uh, and the other thing you have to be careful about when you buy the phyllo, sometimes if it's, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's in the freezer too long and it's old, it also gets the crustiness to it and it's dry and you can't use it. It just, you know, you just lose the flavor. Yes? Do you ever work with shredded phyllo? Yes, that's what I was saying about the kataif that we've used. Uh, we've done it for uh, an appetizer for some weddings where we do the scallop and we encrust it with it and then we serve it with a little bit of uh, balsamic vinaigrette and uh, honey emulsion. How do you hold that all together? Uh, you just moisten the scallop with a little bit of water and then you mold the kataif to it. It'll, it'll adhere. And then you brush it with a little bit of melted butter and that's it. Really simple.
Any other questions? Yeah. The country of Hilo that you mentioned, it, it, it is a little bit, I'm about to say I'm not even sure, it is a little bit thicker. So it is thicker than this, than this texture, yes. It's a little it, bit thicker. You said the flavoring is different. Is that well, it's they said it's a little. Sweet as opposed to savory, or does that not matter? Well, they do use it for more desserts, the thicker phyllo, yeah. for the baklava. And um, I've also done um, a cheesecake with phyllo, which is really fun. And you line your springform pan with the phyllo and put your mixture in the center and then cover it up and bake it and that's and that for that I've used the country because it's a little bit thicker and for the baking it works of the cheesecake. Yes? Yes, yes. So when you line your your pan with the phyllo, you you do it so you have about um probably about 6 inches overhang. And then you cover it at the once you put your filling in, then you just cover it. Like I did with the the pot pie that you ate. You see, you just covered it. Any other questions? The, uh, the mushrooms themselves? Yes. It, is that like, is that, uh, is that ground up to almost like a mushroom powder? I minced it, right. This is what, after I, ba after I baked it, you put it in the oven for about 4 425 degrees for about 10 minutes and then you lower it to 375 for about 20 to 30 minutes. And what it does, it takes up about two thirds of the moisture and it intensifies the flavor. And this is what it looks like. And then I just minced it. But I find that using the sliced mushrooms and the duck cell gives it a little more character, a little more, right. you know, it just, uh, right. some complexity to the strudel. It almost works as an herb in that sense where it's not a full body bite. Exactly. Like, it's it's another, t it's another layer of flavor in addition to your, your shallots and your spices and your cream and your sherry. It's just another layer of complexity to the mushroom. Because, you know, using just a plain white mushroom could be a little bit bland. Yeah. So it's just another, le another level of uh, complexity to the strudel. Cool. Yes. Sure. I went to, well, this happens to be a second career for me. I was an actress for about uh, 15 years. And then I went to uh, French Culinary in LA, and um, I did some. I started a catering company in LA, working for various uh, movie shoots. And then I moved back to New York. I'm originally from New York, and um, I uh, had a restaurant in New York uh, called Bistro uh, 176 on Lexington and 76th Street. And then I met my husband, John Perry, <laughs> and we came out here and. Uh, we had a restaurant in Connecticut, and uh, we started our catering company about 13 years ago. And primarily, we do weddings, uh, large event, you know, large weddings, anywhere from 100 to 250 people. And uh, we love it. It's really it's nice making a you know couple very happy on their wedding day, and it's fun because you get to we design the menu according to the bride and groom their tastes and uh, we don't just offer them you know any menu but we design according to what they like yes I read, I read on the website uh, you and uh, Professor Perry you only do one you only work on one wedding at a time right yes because uh, yes it's very personalized because when the client comes to taste the food that I'm making I'm going to be the one that's there cooking it and then John is the one that works with them throughout the whole process, visiting the rental companies, working with the other vendors. And uh, so the day of the event, with us, both of us there, if anything goes wrong, we both know, you know, what to do. Right. That's very, very... But nothing goes wrong, ever. Never. <laughs> you don't know how many strudels I've burnt. Oops, walk away, I'm working on something else. <laughs> and that's another good thing about... That's another good thing about strudels. If your top layer burns, all you have to do is just take off the top because you've got a lot of layers. <laughs> a lot of layers. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> yes? I was being sprayed on the samples. I'm sorry, what? What was being sprayed on the samples? Oh, that was the truffle oil, white truffle oil. Yeah, I find with the, uh, with the strudel, the way I did this, uh, I find that they compliments. But another thing I've also done for weddings, uh, I could also do it Asian style. Instead of shallots, I'll use a more ginger, like just a little bit of shallots, but more ginger. And then I do a, an Asian glaze. It's kind of like a soy hoisin reduction that I do, which, which is a nice, uh, it's also a nice way to serve the strudels. Yes?
Oh, a tapas restaurant? Yeah, yeah well. <laughs> Do you guys, yeah, did you have wine? Yeah, no. We have lot. I made a lot of food, so we could have uh, another bite with the uh, with the wine. Yes, it is. It's uh, having both of us been in the restaurant business already. We've kind of like done that. But I think if we ever, once our daughter goes to college and we're bored and have nothing to do, we may just do that because I really enjoy the smaller. And that's the way the Greeks eat. Everything is small plates. You know, even like their main meal, it's all, you know, they'll have their, their, their traditional Greek salad with the, uh, the romaine, the cucumber, the feta, and then they'll have a, a small plate of grains, and they have a little bit of chicken. They really don't eat a lot of meat. The lamb is about the only thing, and they do do some uh, kefsetis, which is the Greek uh, meatballs. But I do find that it's, it's really a fun way to eat there, is just having just small bites. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>